All right, everyone. So we're going to jump in here with a case study. Today we had a continuation set up on WISA, which was uh, pretty impressive. I had uh, my biggest winners on it today. This was the stock that I made the most on, but I also had my biggest losers on it today. It was volatile. Volatility, however, does create opportunity. And so uh, we're going to do a deep dive here. Okay, so step one, how do I find the stocks? Uh, I find these on my scanners and WISA I found on uh, three different scanners. It was on my continuation scanner because it has had a 400% plus range in the last two weeks. Stocks that have big ranges like this, I like to keep an eye on because they have the potential to give us continuation. It wasn't at the top of that scan. It doesn't have the most range, but it was on the scan and it actually had uh, the most volume of anything that was on the scan, which if you sort by volume is significant. Um, second, it was on my high of day momentum scanner at about 728 this morning uh, when I took my first trade on it. I traded this between about 730 and 815, and that's actually when I made the bulk of my profit. And then I over traded it a little bit and gave back about 40% of my profit that I made in total. Anyways, that happens. Okay, so, and we'll talk about um, that decision in a moment. It was also on my top gainers scanner. Uh, it was not the leading percentage gainer on the day. I think at the most it was up like 80%, maybe 90%. Um, INVO was our leading gainer, but this one is a bit lower priced, a bit of a grinder, and not really my cup of tea. So anyways, uh, we'll talk about that also in a moment. So that was step one. Now step two, once we found a stock that's moving, is to understand the catalyst. This had news yesterday. Yesterday I had a catalyst. That's what brought in the attention. Today was a continuation or a follow through day, which I, I wasn't really expecting, but you never know. The daily chart, this is my next step to analyze the chart and to look for my entries, was not bad. Yesterday we came up uh, on this green candle to a high of about 950, which was about a triple top with these candles back here. And it was actually the bottom of a gap which then gave us room up to about 1160. So a two point gap from you know 950 to 1150 approximately was pretty nice. So when I pulled up my intraday chart this morning, this is what I was looking at. I was like, okay, wow, yesterday this put in a big move. It squeezed from four to five to six to seven to eight, all the way to 950, that was awesome. It topped at 950, pulled back, and then had a little bit of a rejection candle here at 785. It had a topping tail there, higher volume red candles on a couple rejections. Uh, that was more noticeable on the one minute chart. And then this morning at about 6.30, it squeezed from about 5.50 up to $7. It pulled back, sort of bounced off of 6.60. And at that point, people were talking about it and they were like, oh, let's you know see if there's a good trade here. But I wasn't really, I wasn't really sure about it at that point. So, what I ended up doing was drawing this blue ascending support trend line right here. And notice that it was sort of holding this level, bouncing once, twice, which allowed me to connect the line. And then it came down again and again, and then started to pull away. And so right here as it started to pull away, which was right around 7.30 a.m., this is actually where I took my first trade on it. I bought 2,500 shares at about... Let's see, let me pull up my, um, it was about $7 and uh, 27 cents, I believe was my first entry, 727, uh, sorry, 737. I was getting in to anticipate the break through the half dollar, the half dollar whole dollar, right at 750. And I thought if we broke that level, we would probably get a move higher. So as you can see right here, we kind of pulled, squeezed up, we pulled back, I bought that as a dip at 737. So it had already hit a little higher and I bought a little bit of a dip. Uh, maybe it was actually right here. It squeezes up to 775 and then it pushes and goes all the way to 8 to 850. So on my first trade, as you may recall, my goal right now is to be very disciplined about my share size. So capped at 5,000 shares for my first trade and I bought 2,500. Dipping my toe in. Got in at 737 took profit as it went up to 755. So locking up like 300 bucks. It ended up holding the half dollar of 750. 
it broke it, came back, held it, and I added back at 759 and 761 with a stop at 749. 10 cent stop, 4,000 shares on this trade. It goes up to 765, 775, and I took profit at 778 uh, and 775. So locked up about, again, you know, 15 cents of profit, but this time on 4,000 shares. Now I'm up over a thousand bucks with those two trades. Okay, so with that, I said, it's time to take off my 5,000 share cap and let's lean in. I added 2,000 shares at 7.95 as it came up to eight, added another 2,000, added then another uh, 3,000 shares to a 5,000 share or 6,000 share position approximately and took profit as it squeezed up to 8.38 and 8.50. At that point, I was now up over $3,000 on the day. I then added at 850 and took profit as it squeezed up to nine, selling at 908 and 907, and now I'm up uh, 7,000 on the day. All right, so really leaning in here, being more aggressive. Added at 925, took profit at 930, small winner. Added back at 925, uh, sold, break even, trying to do dips. And this is actually where I started to get into kind of a little bit of trouble. I started over trading the backside just a little bit. Um, but that was right kind of in this area. I wasn't sure. But then it did pull away right here and we squeezed up. So as we hit our high here of about 1150, I was up just over $10,000. And I did that in about, well, 15 minutes. So I made $10,000 in 15 minutes. I then gave back 3000 off the top. It hit a high of 10, 1150, and I bought the first dip. It goes lower. I stop out with a $1,000 loss. It flushes even lower. I add back at 1050, thinking it's going to bounce, and then I stop out at about 950. Now I lost two grand on the second trade. So now I've given back 30% off the top. It does rally back up here, and on this rally back up, I was able to make back like 1500. So I got myself back to up 8,500 and then 8,800. And then coming into the open, I actually got myself um, up to about $9,626. And then right at the open, let me show you the chart. At the open on WISA, what I was looking at here was um, this curling pattern. So as it broke, 1025 right here I added and as it squeezed up to 11 I took profit and was now up back over 10,000 on the day I was like nice well done but I was looking for a retest of that pre-market high up here at 1050 or sorry 1150 and I really thought we were gonna get it so when we pulled back here I bought this dip at 1065 it drops I stop out at like 1060 for a five cent loss no big deal I got uh, back in, I got back out a second time. Again, small loss, no big deal. Then it drops here. I bought as it curled back up. And I added 4,000 shares. And I'm like, okay, I'm looking for this to break. And then at the open, it dumped all the way to 10.05. And on that trade, I gave back about 2,800 bucks. Which really is annoying. So now I'm up 6,000 two hundred seventeen dollars and fifty two cents it's a drag that i was able to make ten thousand in fifteen minutes and i wasn't able to turn that into a fifteen twenty thousand dollar day which is what i was trying to do but if we recall my daily goal is five thousand i crossed the daily goal and once i was above it i said to myself i don't want to go back down below my daily goal so i want to stay above five thousand if i can and i also said to myself as always if i have three big losses in a row or I give back 50% of my profit, I have to stop. Now, if I'd been up 8,000 and I gave back 50% of my profit, I'd be up only four grand, I'd be below 5,000, which would be also not be good. Um, I hit 10,000, which allowed me to give back 50% and still be at my daily goal, which is a very nice position to be in. Uh, however, you know, $6,000 days are great, $10,000 days are even better, and it would have been nice if I could have held on to a little bit more of that. I did a great job increasing share size and capitalizing on this move. And through here, I actually was only trading with a max of 5,000 shares. But 
I caught, you know, 5,000 shares in at an average of 1080 and it flushed down to, you know, 1020, it, it's still a, a big loss, right? I mean, it's just the way it is. So I, I you know, I don't want to have too many regrets about today because overall you have to step up and take risk if you want to have profit in the market. I stepped up to the plate, I took some risk, and I'm walking away right now with $6,217.52 more than I had three hours ago. All right, so that's a great day. Now, obviously, are there lessons to learn from today? I think I, I really think I did a terrific job on this part of the move. This drop right here um, maybe was an issue because the thing was, um, I knew that we filled the gap right here at about 10, 1150, but there was so much volume right here. I just thought it was going to keep going, but I think I got a little, ton I get a little sucked in tunnel vision and, you know, we'd already gotten the first pullback. We'd already gotten the second. So I think I should have just let this rest and not, and, and kind of maybe lost a thousand off the top, but not gone back after that. Cause it was just selling off really hard. So I think this drop was not a good one for me to be losing as much as I did on. Uh, the recovery back up is a little riskier after you've had this kind of drop. And if we're looking at the MACD, you know, the, the MACD didn't actually cross over until after it had come to the double top. But um, ha however, the MACD had crossed over right here. But I saw the indicator, but I ignored it. Or I said, well, I see that, but... I think that we're going to have a spike of volume at the open that's going to send us through this level. Well, we did, but it was to the sell side. So I, I just was wrong on that. And anyways, that happened. So, you know, but I did take a trade against MACD, which is one of the indicators I try to rely on to avoid false breakouts. And then I got caught in a false breakout. So I thought I knew better, but I was wrong on that. And on this one, I think I just was a little too aggressive. So you know, I think part of the aggression today is the fact that I was read on Monday. Well, so I was read on Friday, $650. Uh, and then I was read on Monday by 70 bucks, whatever. It doesn't matter. Yesterday I was green. I was up 2000, but when I finished the day, I was only up like 1100. And of course I had commissions all of those days. So I knew I was sort of in a little bit of a dip after the, the the small red day on Friday, you know, just kind of like break even these last three days. And I was really looking for something I could sink my teeth into and get aggressive on. I felt a little annoyed that I missed this move yesterday on WISA. I, I was, uh, you know, I had other things I was doing and I wouldn't normally be trading at this time of day, but I was just like, man, we've had such a slow week. And then, of course, you know, when we finally have a move, it's at an odd time where I don't trade it. But, you know, that, that's just the way it is, and I can't get too upset about that. Anyways, I, I was, I, I knew I would have a little tendency to be a bit more aggressive. Like, finally, I'm at bat. Like, time to step up to the plate and swing hard. So I'm just glad that I didn't, you know, load up with, like, 20,000 shares in any of these areas. You know, I still, even though I took my restriction off, and I could have done that, I kept myself restrained. And so I think that that was a job well done. But, you know, obviously reflecting a little bit on the fact that I gave back almost 40% of the profit that I had, that is a little bit more than I'd prefer. And it is a little bit of an emotional trigger, you know, that and that for me was like, okay, I have to walk away now because if I give back more, you know, then I'm starting to get a little close to giving, you know, cutting into maybe breaking below my daily goal, right? So I just said, you know what, let's just walk away here, call it a day where you cross the daily goal. Um, but I think I was starting to also count my chickens before they hatched, so to speak, because I was thinking last week I was up like 13, 14,000. The week before I was up 13, 14,000. This week so far, I'm, I'm only up like a thousand bucks from yesterday because Monday was a small $70 loss. But then being up 10,000 today, I was like, whoa, sweet, right back on track. For another fourteen to fifteen thousand dollar a week, um, so I kind of started to be like, "Yeah, this is," you know. I started kind of tallying it up, and when you do that, and then you lose it, you feel a greater sense of loss. When you instead are like, approach it as like, just you just have to not do that at all while you're trading. Like, just focus on trading, 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 
And then once you stop, you just have to be like, well, awesome. That's this much more than I had at the beginning of the day. Job well done. Because if you start counting every high watermark, like as a trader, you're going to drive yourself crazy. So I fell into a little bit of that today. Um, and I think it's because I was kind of trying to make myself feel better over the fact that the last three days had been slow. I was like, yeah, you made up for it today. But then anyways, took that last trade and pushed it um, just a little too much. So that's fine. You know, it, it is what it is. And I'll tell you, it's a lot easier to get over giving back some profit when you're still walking away above your daily goal. When you continue trading and the next thing you know, you're like, I was up 10,000 and now I'm up $100 on the day or now I'm red 1,000. That's when it takes a little longer to get over it. So I'm walking away now while this is still easy to get over and I'll be back at it first thing tomorrow morning, as always, live streaming for Warrior Pro members. So I'll see you in the chat room, guys. And those of you on YouTube, thank you as always for being tuned in. I hope you hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Lots of really great educational content on this channel, and there's more coming. So make sure you guys are um, not are subscribed and have the notification key button turned on so you get the alert when I post a new upload. All right, thanks as always for tuning in. Reminder, trading is risky. My results are not typical, but I show them, uh, of course, so you get a real sense of what it's like as a trader. I have red days just like anyone else, and sometimes they're pretty big. But as always, manage your risk, and I'll see you guys back here tomorrow morning.